Welcome back to theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, joined by my coach Jeff Frick. And we have David Floyer in the house, who's the lead analyst at Wikibon.org, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And uh, uh, David's uh, standing in until we get uh, John uh, and Gates from Rackspace, CTO of Rackspace was on his way down. Uh, but we want to we deep dive now and, and just give a drill down from what happened yesterday. Okay, this is SiliconAngle's continuous coverage of OpenStack live for three days, blanket coverage, where we extract the signal from the noise and uh, people are starting to roll out. They're about a half hour behind here, so uh, we want to just get into the, some of the content. Yesterday was the early day. People came in early, all the key coders, all the key developers. They brought in the analysts this year and they brought in the users. And one of the big things that we hear here at OpenStack and we know in the tech business is successful platforms really revolve around three things. This is the key message from this morning. You need have great software, you need an innovative ecosystem, and you need successful users. And the users of OpenStack are service providers, enterprises, and ultimately the end users are the people who use it, mobile applications, you know, low latency, all the stuff that, that's a, that people run every day. So David Floyer, uh, you're here, you're on the ground, you were, I mean, I know when things are hot, when we don't get texts from you and you're getting all this great text of, from the <laughs> sessions, you had, you were involved in all the intimate conversations yesterday, so give us the take on that. Well, it was a, it's uh, the analyst day. Uh, I've been to umpteen analyst days uh, in my time uh, as an analyst, and this was one of the best, if not the best. Um, they m kept it very simple. They had half an hour of introductions about what the theory was behind it, what they were trying to do, and then it was straight into how people are using it. And that was such a refreshing change from tightly scripted. Uh, PR driven. Uh, <laughs> PR driven. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a vendor, um, what's the vendor best speak. word? Vendor speak. speak, yes, there you go. That's a nice <laughs> way of putting it. So, uh, so that was what was really refreshing. And they had user after user after user talking about how they practically were putting it into it, what their business reasons for doing it were, what their key objectives were. So to summarize, if you like, from the top, before we go in, into any more detail, the key reason they wanted to do this, they wanted a stable platform, they wanted a platform that was expandable, and they wanted to be free of vendor lock-in. That was the driving force behind all of the people. They said they did not want to have to depend on any particular hardware or software component or a storage component. They want to be able to swap it out if necessary, if it didn't meet their requirements for their particular applications. The second thing about was interesting across all of them, all of the people were putting up cloud services. That's what they were focusing on. It was putting up applications which end users were going to use over the cloud. Uh, and again, this I thought was very interesting. These are the volumes, these were the things that mattered to the people. So what about the, um I mean, we had, um, I just got a tweet from Randy Bias who just was watching. Hey Randy, how are you? Um, he was on yesterday and he was very critical of the, um, the, the data center of the future, which everyone's buzzed, the software defined data center, uh, which is really you know, a marketing slogan. And, um, but, but for the most part, it's a moonshot. That's the at destination. What was your take on the reality of the path of OpenStack? Where do you think it is today? Obviously, it's, it's getting great reviews. You have good, good, good stories to tell. I want to dig into that. Where is OpenStack right now on the reality or the path to the final destination, which is the modern infrastructure, software-led infrastructure and big data, et cetera? Well, uh, let's define, first of all, let's define what that end point is. And I think that's, and then you can see how far along you are on the track to it. So, first of all, um, there, there are some mammoth uh, uh, forces 
going on in the industry. And they're fundamentally driven by applications, new styles of application, new styles of user application, coming in essentially from the cloud. They, they are getting economies of scale from the cloud. They can introduce and put up new people quickly. They are innovating at an amazing pace every three months, every six months, instead of a, uh, you know, an, a, a new version of, uh, of uh, Microsoft every two or three or four years. Uh, a much faster pace of innovation. And they're putting up, uh, uh, building it on infrastructures which are much, much lower cost, on databases which are much, much lower cost. So this is the driving force. Uh, the second driving force is low latency. That's allowing much bigger databases and these, uh, the expansion of this, uh, of this technology. And uh, uh, OpenStack has, has acknowledged that it needs that. Uh, that's in a component called Cinder and store um, uh, the, uh, w um, the uh, SolidFire are one of the contributors to that, uh, to that all flash arrays in that Cinder, in Cinder component. So it's allowing new things to come in all the time from low latency. And then the third big thing is that these new applications coming in are far more valuable to the end user. To give just one little data point, it used to take them 10 seconds to render a screen uh, from Best Buy. It now takes two seconds. They're taking control of the whole stack from end to end. So they're putting out much better applications, better productivity. When it goes into the enterprise, it's going to allow a much flatter database and allow you to code the system to the workflow you require instead of having to follow the workflow that's dictated to you by SAP or whatever the, the application is. David, let's drill down on, on for a second, because you, you're, uh, for the folks out there who, who want to know more, go to wikibon.org slash um, SLI, or so, uh, software-led infrastructure, or just search, just search Google Wikibon space software-led infrastructure. You've been putting out, I mean, going back now three years now, IO-centric infrastructure, which we then repositioned as software-led infrastructure, mainly because uh, the software defined moniker doesn't really fit because it's no. not defined. No, right. uh, and it makes a lot of sense. So with SDN exploding onto the scene and now software fine storage, software is the heart of the equation. Yeah. I want you to talk about what you see as areas to work on. Meaning, um, we heard from Bloomberg's uh, user, they said below OpenStack, above OpenStack. Explain to, uh, to folks out there is, you know, what are the things that need to work on? High availability database, message yeah. queues, high availability storage, you know, we had NetApp on yesterday. What's yeah. your take on the key areas of improvement? I, th I think you've got it absolutely right. It's below uh, uh, OpenStack, which is the, the technologies at the bottom, and it's above it. It's the orchestration of, of it that's required. The automation and the orchestration. So those are the things that are going to solidify it to being a uh, enterprise ready and uh, uh, um, uh, much more efficient from an operational's point of view. So what, what, uh, what, I, what if you look below it, then there's new technologies coming in all the time from, uh, from Cinder and other places like that. And above it is, 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 uh, is a whole lot of orchestration stuff that's going on as well. Okay, David, we're going to have to uh, cut it right there. I know you're coming back at 2.40, so folks, we're going to do another deep dive with David. We're going to get more. There's a lot more to talk about, a lot more stories to tell, a lot more data to share from yesterday's analyst meeting with David Floyer from Wikibon. Again, this is a software-led infrastructure. If you want to understand more about some of the research that Wikibon is doing and what David's leading with our team uh, at Wikibon, go to wikibon.org or just search Wikibon uh, software-led infrastructure. And of course, uh, we have all that great data on big data, which is wikibon.org slash big data. So, David, We'll see you at 2.40. I know you got yep. a lot of briefings. We'll be right back with the CTO of Rackspace here. The keynotes are now getting out. We're going we're gonna to dive into Rackspace, their motivation behind OpenStack, their passion. I was there when they were uh, just starting to roll out OpenStack or to think about the idea of onboarding more developers uh, early on in the days. So we're going to deep, deep into, dig into that and more here on Side the Cube. I'm John Furrier, Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with John Gates from Rackspace right after this short break.